Welcome to this lecture series on linear model identification. In the previous lecture series on dynamic system representations and modeling, we have come up with the discrete time state space representation of a linear system as we can see here on the left hand side. In this lecture series, we are going to discuss how can we identify these parameters which are inside the A, B and C matrices by observing the inputs U, the states X and the outputs Y. In the difference equation which we can see here, we can basically identify two sub-models. The first sub-model here, this is the dynamic part. So the dynamic part of the model because this basically describes the temporal relation between x at the time step k and x at the next time step k plus 1, considering also this input. So there is basically the entire dynamics of the state space model encoded in. Secondly, we have our measurement equation, and this measurement equation maps our states and our inputs to the measurement y. However, this is done at time step k, k and k, so this is basically no temporal information or no temporal component there because this is a static or algebraic equation. So that is therefore our static model part. And of course we're interested in actually identifying both such that we can identify unknown parameters in a, b, c and d. However, the static part is actually a little bit simpler and more straightforward, so that's why we are going to first discuss and motivate a linear system identification based on the static model, and then based on tools and methods we are going to develop to identify the unknown parameters here, we will transfer and discuss these methods in the context of identifying the dynamic part. Right? So we will start with the static part and then do the dynamic part in a couple of lecture videos from now on. If we just have a look at this second static equation, we can basically summarize that we are interested in identifying a model or a system which is describing the mapping from UK and xk towards the output y of k, right? So this is basically just a simplified graphical representation of that. And in order to do so, we are going to assume that we perfectly know these inputs. So we will consider that we have access to the system inputs and the state as an intermediate quantity here. And we will also consider that we have access to the outputs for obvious reasons, but I make this in a parenthesis because we will also consider in the following that this measurement of the output, which we might need to measure with some technical sensor, that this might be subject to measurement noise, such that we do not really 100% precisely know y of k but that we know a noisy variant of y of k, right? So these are our assumptions. For now, we have perfect access to u and x of k to identify this output model, so this part here, and we have also access to the output of this model, which might be subject to noise. Now, with these assumptions, we are going to start describing how we can rearrange measurements at different time steps. And therefore, we first consider that we will have a single time step measurement with a scalar output. So we consider a scalar output y from the real number, but scalar. And the two input parts, the states, we will consider up to n and additional inputs m for the u. 
with these scalar measurement assumption, we can write down the measurement equation for one time step. Y of k is equal to C1 to Cn times the column vector x1 of k to xn of k. So that is this part here. Plus, similarly, d1 to dm times q1 at time step k to um at time step k, right? So this would be this part here. This c vector here, right? So this is basically uh, the row vector with n elements, and this is a row vector with m elements. These are just the vectorial representations of this c and this d, which becomes now vectors instead of matrices because we just have a scalar output here. We can now rewrite this equation because according to our assumption which we have here, we can state that we know x, we know u, but we do not know our parameters. And we also said that we know our output, but condi uh, conditionally with noise. And we therefore rewrite this equation just a little bit in that form that we will concatenate our known quantities, so these two vectors, in a row vector, x1 at time step k until xn at time step k, and then we concatenate u1 at time step k to um at time step k. And we will multiply this with a column vector consisting of the parameters c1 to cn concatenated with this parameter vector d1 to dn. Right, same equation, just concatenated the known information here at the input side of our submodel and the unknown information in terms of the unknown parameters. And in the following, we will call often, very often, this our regressor vector set. So that is a small z here, a regressor vector. which consists of the known variables of this equation. And this is our parameter vector w, parameter vector, which concatenates all unknown parameters of this linear static equation. Okay, so regressors, known quantities, parameter vector, unknown, par unknown parameters which we want to identify. Now we have rewritten this just for one measurement, so for one k. However, we have multiple parameters, or normally we have multiple parameters which we would like to identify, so we need more measurements in order to obtain enough information to determine this parameter vector. And of course now we could say, okay, these are n plus m unknowns, so it would make sense to also have n plus m measurements, because then we would basically build up something like an ideally defined, a well-defined linear equation system, which could be theoretically solved uh, uniquely. However, we have said that here at the outputs, so at the left-hand side of our equation, there might be some noise, some measurement noise. And therefore it makes maybe sense to take even more than this n plus m measurements to utilize additional measurement points in order to suppress the measurement noise impact at the output of our submodel. Therefore we will consider that we will take k equals 1 up to capital N measurement points 
And if we do that, we can just rewrite this last equation. On the left hand side, you get y at time step one, or at the first position, and y capital M. And on the right hand side of our equation, we get x1 at the initial time step until xn at the initial time step concatenated with u1 at the initial time step until um at the initial time step. So that would be our regressor vector here for one time step. And now we concatenate that with up to n time steps, capital N time steps, so that becomes x1, capital N, x small n, capital N, concatenated with u1, capital N, until u m, at time step capital M. And yeah, this multiplication from the right hand side can be still done with the same parameter vector. So C1 till Cn and D1 till Dm, right? And in the following, we will name this as our output vector capital Y, which is the column vector with capital N elements. This here is our regressor matrix Z, which has N times N plus M elements. And this is the already discussed parameter or weight vector W, which has n plus m elements, right? And this final rewriting here of this equation is basically something like our data representation because we have in the regressor matrix in this capital Z, we have all the known information at the input of the model. And on the left hand side in this output vector y, we have the dependent information at the output of the um, model. And this is subject to this parameter vector w, which we consider as unknown for the moment. And in the next video, we are going to find out how we can define formally a well-defined identification problem such that we can identify this parameter w if we have sufficiently well-structured data for z and for y. Thank you.